Welcome to Talk Commerce, where we talk about how merchants, agencies, developers experience commerce. This week, we interview Willem Wigman with Haifa, Hufa, however you pronounce it, the revolutionary new Magento theme that will change your life. Did I say change your life? Yes, this shows how powerful the Magento community still is and continues to be. We talk about the origin of the name, not to spoil anything, but it's good. We discuss the impact on site speed for merchants and how Google is changing the game for your website and how it's ranked. If you're a merchant, you need to share this episode with everyone. If you're an agency, you need to get on board with Haifa and get your dev teams there too. The Talk Commerce podcast is sponsored by Swift Daughter. E-commerce developers solve problems daily. In fact, some of those seem like mountainous hurdles that must be climbed in a matter of hours. Stress levels can go through the roof No wonder the plague of burnout affects developers, too. Ah, but there's a vaccine for that. Investing time in your career will take you farther than you ever imagined. Meet Swift Daughter. Swift Daughter exists to help you become the e-commerce hero that is indispensable and irreplaceable at your company. We do this through Magento Certification Study Materials and Joseph Maxwell's most recent book, The Art of E-Commerce Debugging. Go to swiftotter.com to learn more about how you can quickly climb the ranks in your quest to be a better developer. While you're there, use the coupon code TALKCOMMERCE for 15% off any digital goods at swiftotter.com. This episode is sponsored by Eway Corporation, the partner of choice for technology, infrastructure, and enterprise-level digital solutions, and AWS Select Consulting Partner, Eway Corporation, forward together. My name is Brent Peterson, and I'm your host. Please remember to subscribe wherever you download your podcasts. And now, Talk Commerce. Welcome to Talk Commerce. Today I have Willem from Haifa Hufa Haifa Themes. Willem, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us what you do and what your favorite thing, what your passion is. Hi, Brent. Thanks uh, thanks for having me on. Um, So yeah, I'm I'm Willem from Hufa Themes. Um, and um, should we say recently, uh, uh, over the past year, I've been building a product uh, for, for Magento, which is a, a, a new front end that uses um, all the things that, that we're familiar with, uh, the old school Magento stuff that most developers really like. And I ditched everything that um, um, was bloated or slow or not modern enough to our taste. So uh, we, we, we built um, a new front end that's fast and fun to work with. Yeah, and great. And I started somewhere last June and uh, now we're full steam. Wow. And it, it seems like it just started two weeks ago and you got it done and it's launched. But okay, good. Yeah, that's I, I know that is the buzz in the community right now. Everybody's very excited about it. Um, uh, Yissa and I have had a lot of debate over how to pronounce it. And I think we've talked about it on this show at least seven times. And if I've had seven different pronunciations, I understand it's a Finnish word, hufa. True. And yeah. what the, the way I do it is I clench, my, I clench my butt cheeks and I say hufa. And it helps me say it correctly. Can we see that. <laughs> the same way I say Gisa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I had a bit of marketing uh, in my uh, in my study, um, and uh, it's it's one of the first lessons. If you want to uh, have a brand name stick, you need people to to talk about it, and. Um, the, the more often the name is being repeated, the better it sticks. So um, I'm um, I'm never disappointed if people uh, stay stuck on pronouncing Huva, um, but it has more meaning t- uh, to me than that, of course. Um, I lived in Finland for uh, four years, and um, Huva has a very positive connotation for it's 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 everything that's positive and finished. It it literally means good, but also trustworthy and um, and um, uh, wanted. Um, how do you say? Um, well, it's it it's uh, it has a very positive uh, meaning and um, yeah, we we 
we try to make everything good about the Magento front end, have an enjoyable experience, both as a as a visitor to your web shop, but um, also very much um, take away the pain points that developers have with working on Magento front end. Yeah, and uh, I'm I know that from what I've spoken to other people about, um, you know, a lot of it is as you introduced it, redu removing all the heavy bloat that happened in the beginning or happens with the Luma theme, and then just letting people do what they need to do to, uh, to make it work. Um, can you give us, uh, can you give us some, some of your motivation last June? Uh, what, what made you just like give up on Luma and dive into Vaifa and, and I, I guess behind that, what was the energy that you put into it to make that happen? Um, yeah, giving up on Luma happened way before that, actually, but it was a long process. Um, of course, we, we were all never happy with Luma, um, starting with Magento 2.0. Um, we've, we've had quite some issues with the front end. Um, and um, the one that sticked around the longest was performance issues. Um, and uh, working at Intergenet, an agency in Germany, um, I spent more than a year optimizing some of the projects on the front end part, um, which mainly meant optimizing JavaScript um, to both improve the perceived performance as a visitor to a web shop, but also very much to uh, have Google accept it uh, as a rankable <laughs> shop. Um, and um, yeah, that, that just kept keeping worse. Um, if you install Luma out of the box with demo data, it's made exactly in the way that, that it scores okay-ish, but as soon as you start to customize anything on Luma front end, um, just the amount of, of JavaScript is enough to, um, well, have, have Google not accept it. Um, and uh, while well, the way dependencies are, are built into the front end, um, it just takes very long until your browser figured out what JavaScript should be loaded in and then rendered. And that's a process that you can't really improve. There's just too much JavaScript in, in the framework. Um, so I, I, I felt the pain yeah, to, to uh, I, I remember your question, what drove me to it in June. Um, so that was the issue at hand. Um, what drove me to it is that um, uh, on my um, free time, my wife asked me to make a web shop for her. Um, and um, I didn't want to spend my free time working on Luma. Um, I wasn't too enthusiastic about PWA solutions either. Um, I've seen enough of both of those uh, solutions um, working at Integer and, and before. Um, and I didn't want to spend my free time working in that mess. Uh, but I love Magento so much, um, especially um, the, the backend developer experience. And being a front-end developer, firstly, mostly, uh, um, if we go back far enough, uh, um, I, I wanted to be I wanted to have a front-end experience that was also enjoyable. So I decided, since my wife only needed a web shop with max ten products because she she makes jewelry, uh, handmade, so she she would make a collection with maximum twelve products. So that would be fairly straightforward. A one overview page, no layered navigation, no filters. A lot of things um, were not needed for her. So I thought, well, let's just see how far I get because just building a template from, from scratch shouldn't be too hard. And before I, <laughs> before I knew it, I had a, a prototype. Um, within two days, I was sending screenshots to my colleagues uh, uh, in excitement that I I had a homepage on a Magento front end rendered with PHTML, a PHP layout uh, XML, but with some very modern front end tools from the Laravel ecosystem. So that's Tilwin CSS and Alpine JS. Um, 
and it was super fast. It worked nicely. Uh, it was, uh, I had super much fun. I got so much excitement at least at last. I, I felt exa- excitement again working on the Magento front end. And uh, within a month, uh, I pitched it at uh, Intergenet and we used it on the first project. And um, so that was around July. Um, they decided to go with, with uh, well, the unnamed front end that I had at that time. Um, and uh, soon the next project followed and the next one, and, and we built it out uh, together uh, from there on. Um, and um, last February, we had a 1.0 release, which covered most of the features that I considered uh, necessary for a first release. So um, yeah, it's now, uh, it's, it's June. So we have a few more uh, releases uh, under our belt by now. Um, a lot of feature, feature coverage, um, a lot of um, response out of the work field, um, uh, almost, I think, 90 agencies working with it. So we get a lot of feedback. Um, we see a lot of work being built currently. People are enthusiastic. Um, we're soon starting to see more and more um, recurring uh agencies so agencies coming back for more projects uh either just finishing their first project or still in the process of finishing the first one but already deciding to uh continue working with viva so yeah that that looks like a really really good uh trajectory yeah it's very exciting that how a spouse can drive innovation for example I was always told I need to wash the dishes. So I innovated by getting a dishwasher and it made it happen much faster. So I see this in a similar format um, that your spouse has dri- driven you to innovate on your own, uh, this, this faster theme. From a merchant point of view, let's just like point out the need for speed um, and then I think looking way back, and I know it's been commented many times that five years ago, Luma was dead, or even when Magento 2 was launched, Luma was dead. And somehow it became acceptable that Magento 2 would load in four seconds. And our benchmark was four seconds when everybody else's benchmark was sub one second or even two seconds for, I think the PWA theme is something like one or two seconds. Can Can you give us some some thought about how how that that benchmark of four seconds kind of kind of um made our community sluggish in a way like i feel like just the luma theme and that nobody else jumped in kind of also made us a little sluggish in what we're doing as developers so the the issue at hand was was one very hard to tackle because um as soon as Magento provides the framework for the front end and defines what the basic tooling is, that's the foundation of everything that's being built from there on. Um, so you, a whole ecosystem is built around that um, third party modules and, and, well, the whole basics of building a front end. If you look at any documentation or um, uh, any tooling that's out there, everything, the whole the whole ecosystem is built on top of Luma. Um, that even Adobe slash Magento didn't see uh, an easier solution to improve that than to just throw it away and put a PWA Atlas solution in front of uh, in front of Magento. Um, are you are you planning on having something like uh, the Hoofa data sample data set as well now? Or? speed things up um i don't you mean um you mean as a sample data to install for a demo site yeah i mean i think having a hoofa theme with sample data to just let people see how great it is and and fast it is would be a would be a really good sort of kickoff to making sure that everybody's adopting this standard one thing my colleague derek harlick is always complaining about is how number one, sample data and loading in the Luma theme is out of the box really slow. But number two, um, it doesn't really, uh, it, it is a little bit too broad and there's so many things that merchants don't see 
out of the sample data and there's things that merchants, too many things that merchants do maybe do see. And then from a developer standpoint, sometimes if you just want to load Luma without the sample data, you lose a lot of its functionality because it loads all this other junk that you don't need, which I guess we're going into today that the one of the reasons Hoofa came about was because it doesn't it it doesn't need to load all the junk we don't need. Um, yeah, the, yeah. So uh, you know, having some kind of a demo install and and uh, having having a way that people can install it and try it quickly would be a sort of a good next step to get people to adopt it. Yeah, um, so so for now, if we have a demo instance, we, we use the default Magento demo data just to show that um, the features that, that Luma has out of the box, that those are also there. Um, I think we're well over 95% of feature coverage. Um, I, I haven't counted them, but we have a feature matrix uh, linked on our website where you can see every feature uh, what what states what state it is in? Um, so for the open source version, we're, we're quite far uh, feature wise. Uh, enterprise we're still working on, um, which goes by many names. I keep calling it enterprise. Yeah, it's Adobe Commons um, now. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's, uh, perhaps it might stay that way for now um, for for a bit longer. But um, I mean, everyone knows if you talk about the enterprise product, uh, what what it is. Um, we might just be talking about Magento and Adobe Commerce in the future, in the future as two products, but uh, different discussion. Um, so we use the, the default Luma uh, uh, sample data for now. Um, it shows most of the features, but if you look at, for example, the bundle product that's in the sample data, it doesn't really show the different product option types that you have. I think it only shows either radio buttons or drop downs. Um, and the custom options are hardly displayed in the sample data, so file upload and those kind of things. But um, I think what would be greatest is um, when that list of showcase websites becomes bigger and people see what has been built with Viva uh, because it's it's endless. The, the, the speed in which you can build um, custom features um, it's much higher than than anything I've heard. Um, agencies are telling me that it goes 30 to 50 percent quicker to develop custom features uh, compared to either Luma or uh, PWA solutions. So that's massive, um, um, and it's it's. Um, <laughs> I recently got the feedback after a meetup we did um, that people are still um, wary or they're, they're, they 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 can't really believe yet that there's a front-end product for Magento where people are purely positive about. So I got the feedback like, okay, so more and more people are starting to tell us that it's really good and we hear not so much complaints. So we're starting to believe that's true. <laughs> so that's a good thing. It needs some time to, to sink in. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, time is going to help us to, uh, to push this along. Um, so going back to just the importance of a merchant and the speed of your site or, or, or pointing out to a merchant how something like this really affects your Google rankings. Can you just tell us a little bit about Lighthouse and how, how you use that to give us some of the feedback or not feedback, give us some of the metrics on, on how sites load and how important that is, especially in Google rankings? Yeah, um, Google basically checks the quality of your page in, in, in um, user, um, well, perceived performance, how quickly your page renders. And that's not just how fast the server can build the page and send that to the browser. So that's, that would be the server, uh, server render time, um, the, the uh, initial page load. But then the biggest bottleneck that Magento has is that on the front end, um, usually megabytes of JavaScript need to be loaded. And JavaScript is, a, is, is what pretty much powers interactions in your browser. Um, 
a lot of the things that are being done with JavaScript can also be done with, with native browser capabilities. Um, but yeah, we've seen it's this trend where um, everything that makes up your front end is now being built with JavaScript. That's basically what the synonym for PWA solutions currently is JavaScript files building a web page with megabytes of JavaScript, while your browser is perfectly able to build that page without using the JavaScript or with, with maybe using 5% of that JavaScript. Um, and we kind of lost track there. Like we had Luma where we had a lot of JavaScript to build, for example, sliders um, and to calculate prices on the product page and to load in the, the customer, the private data of, of a customer. So what's in his card and everything. Um, and that all consists of hundreds of files of uh, JavaScript. Um, and that means that your browser needs to download each and every of those files and then put them all together, read them, understand them, and then execute things on the page. So before your browser is able to actually show you the page and then let you as a user click on the things to add something to the card, to see how many out items are in your card, um, all, of these, all of these actions, um, typically require a lot of JavaScript while well, those are not needed. Now, Google has become more and more strict on how much data you're um, pushing through the wire to the browser. And especially if you're on a mobile device and you have 2G, 3G uh, reception, um, if you, yeah, I mean, it happens a lot that you're in a rural area or, or in, a, in a building where coverage is bad. Um, you switch to lower bandwidth speed and loading a Luma front-end page with such a, a reception takes much more than four se seconds. Four seconds is optimistic if you have a good connection. Yeah. Let, let me try to uh, dumb this down for our listeners. And, and I, I, again, I want to try to gear this to some of our merchants out there who, mm -hmm. who may be listening that would maybe not understand the JavaScript idea or even understand how... Magento traditionally loads. If you think of yourself as going into a regular retail store, at some point you're blocked at the front door because you you wanna go down some aisle, but it won't let you go down the aisle until a whole bunch of things have happened. So let's just say that the, the attendant at the front door needs to tell you every bit of information about all the pieces in the store. And so you want to, all you need to do is go in and buy some coffee, but is also the, the attendant is sitting there telling you how to pick your yogurt, how to pick your breakfast cereal, how to cook your oatmeal uh, before you could even enter the store when all you want to do is get to the coffee, purchase the coffee, get out of the store. So in a sense, Luma right now is that attendant at the very beginning explaining to you all these different things you have to do, filling up your brain, which is now your browser, with all these different tasks that you may or may not need to do when you get in there, and then then letting you go in uh, into it, where, uh, where the Hoofa theme would allow you to, as you're going through the store, uh, load those items into your brain or into the browser, and then let you execute them at that time and then leave when you need to. Is that a good sort of dumbed down representation of what it does? That works. Um, yeah, especially if you think uh, the store would have certain um, conventions, you know, the fruit is at the start of the, sh of the shop. It's, the, it's at the entrance, it's usually there. And you, or you, you know what a coffee is and you can go get and get your coffee, go get your coffee and go to the uh, cashier and, and pay and leave. Um, yeah, without knowing everything that's to know about the rest of the store. Yeah, that's, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Every morning I know what my coffee is and every evening I know what my beer is. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and then if you're talking about the ranking factors from Google, they um, there's an easy way to measure how Google rates your your uh, your store. Um, uh, traditionally, that's that's Google Lighthouse. It has six metrics where it checks how fast was the initial page uh, sent to the browser, then um, uh, how long does it take until you can interact with the page. Uh, start typing things. Um, and there's, there's, there's a bunch of those metrics which are um, moving this month. Um, and it's going more geared to just three of those metrics, which are called the uh, uh, core metrics. Um, and that's uh, layout shifts, which means that if you load a page, that the first render is stable. Um, opposed to having a page load and you see a product you want to click on, but then the slider loaded on top of that, which pushed the product down that you wanted to click on. And now you click on the banner in the slideshow and you're going to a whole different page than what you wanted. Um, that's that's layout stability. So that, that's called a content layout shift. The more stable you can get the first render of your page, um, the, the better um, the usability of that is. Um, and that's something that I put a lot of care in that um, your browser understands from the moment that it loads the page, it understands how everything should look. And uh, JavaScript has no influence on positioning of things. So either we reserve some space, uh, space if there's a, a slider going to be loaded uh, through GraphQL, because we, we do use uh, those kind of technologies. But if we do, we reserve the pay, uh, space on the page so that initially it's empty and then the slider is loaded into that space, but it doesn't change the height of the entire page. Um, and, and, and CLS is something that I wrote about uh, last year, um, and it has now become ultra important. I think in May was when Google announced that new ranking and and I, I think what what you're describing is a is for a merchant point of view would be that the um, the page loads and if you, even the worst part is if you're on your mobile device the page loads and as you're trying to push a button everything keeps shifting on you <laughs> and you're trying to push it and you keep hitting the wrong button for you know so for example I've bought many many of the wrong uh, nail polish items many times when I really wanted to buy a bike pump. So it was very frustrating for me. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so that's 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 not a great user experience. Um, and, and Google kind of punishes you for that. Um, and um, yeah, those 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 metrics are becoming more and more important. They, they initially were supposed to uh, push those updates through in, in May, uh, that's true, but I think they they delayed it until last week. Uh, the first update went through and then in July there's another big update coming through and then um, from, from today or this week you should see uh, some changes in ranking because those uh, core metrics became uh, uh, more important. Um, Remind us of it, those, those new, those top three core metrics again. Yeah, that's, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, peek. Uh, so it's the core, uh, core layout shift. Um, and then you have uh, the largest, largest contentful, contentful paint and first input delay. And uh, the first input delay I just mentioned um, that, that, um, that's how long it takes before you can interact with a page. So if there's a search form um, on the page, you, you load the page. And if you click on the, on the search uh, input, um, how long uh, does the page need to respond to that click? So how much is happening on the page that needs to be processed before you're actually able to do anything with the page? Um, so ideally you would want a visitor to come to your page and as soon as he sees something he wants to interact with, be able to click it. Um, and then the largest content for, content for paint uh, means um, um, how long it takes the browser to um, 
to fully paint the page. To uh, and painting uh, uh, means it it reads the HTML. That's the structure of the page. Then it reads the CSS, um, and that combines um, tells the browser how things should look. So what elements is where, and uh, what's the visual representation. So um, that both depends on the amount of CSS that you're loading on a page. Um, but it also depends on how big, how big your images are. If on the first page on the above default, uh, if that still exists, if you have a big banner and the banner is two megabytes, it means that your browser needs to fully download that file. Uh, often also needs to see what the dimensions of that file uh, are of the image. Uh, so it can, it can determine how that page should look. Um, so one thing to, to improve that um, largest, largest content paint is to reduce image, uh, image sizes, make sure that uh, your CSS uh, file is not too big. Um, and for example, uh, give the right, uh, right width, and, uh, width and height to an image in the, in the codes where you're, where you're putting the, the image uh, on the page. You can already define that it's a 600 by 400 pixel image. Then the browser doesn't need to fully download the image to already know what the, um, the um, ratio is. So it can already reserve the space. Uh, so that's all things to speed up um, how fast your page is being loaded onto the screen. Um, so yeah, uh, Google brought back those those six metrics that were before to these three that are most important um, uh, going forward here. And I, I think a good a good way to describe this to uh, um, to an end user or merchant would be something like uh, when when Magento two first came out, Luma was well, Luma was sort of not cutting edge, but it was acceptable at the time. And as we've progressed through time, uh, there hasn't been any, there hasn't really been any updates. Um, there hasn't been certainly, well, there, it's, it's like you bought a car in, in 2014 or whatever, and then the car was never updated for the next seven years. Um, and it didn't include Apple Play, Pay or any, any sort of features you'd like to see in that car. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they left the engine at the same exact speed and everybody else is now going faster and better and innovating and growing while Magento itself is sitting there stagnating. And your, and your car is entirely made of steel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fixed, fixed, uh, fixed plated steel and uh, it's carrying uh, around uh, some concrete in the in the trunk, <laughs> right? Extra sand. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. That's 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 kind of true. Um, and uh, what we did was uh, take off all that steel and replace it with carbon fiber. So, can we talk a little bit then about uh, the difference between the approach of right? I, I think Adobe's approach right now is is to do headless with a PWA and leave alone or just abandon the existing built-in theme where your approach is to have a theme that will allow us to still use Magento without having external resources to run your front end. Um, do, you, do you feel like there's a path that's gonna happen one way or the other, or do you, uh, do you think that this dual path is a good way to go? From whose point of view? Uh, let's say for your point of view. <laughs> um, so I'm sticking to this path. Um, I'm I'm staying with what they call the monolith, which is the one big system that does everything for Magento, which could still use APIs for um, access services like search um, um, and well have everything in that one system which is a system that I love to work with um, and um, 
that there are hundreds of thousands of developers worldwide that know how to work with this, have up to 10 years experience with it, and really like working with this. Even though we're a bunch of complainers, um, we're, we're a big bunch of developers and, and uh, specialists that really like Magento the way it is, um, if only the front end would have improved. Um, I had my fair amount of experience with JavaScript frameworks, uh, mainly React. Um, I, I spent one and a half, one and a half a year at least working almost full time in React, building React components for the Luma front end. So I know enough about the technologies um, to be able to, to be able to work with it. But whenever I start working with those PW solutions that are currently out there, I just don't feel, I don't enjoy the experience. It's not for me. I don't, I don't feel that the web by default should be an app. I don't feel that we should be building websites primarily with JavaScript because that's the other way around. With JavaScript, you're, you're, you're building, you're, you're letting JavaScript pretend to be a web page. Um, while I think at the core, JavaScript was built to do stuff on top of HTML and CSS on your page. It's to enrich your page, to create more, uh, more interactions on a page, um, to make things slightly more fancy. Um, but the more JavaScript you add on top of uh, your website, the more your browser needs to digest and, and uh, try to understand and fetch in extra files. And it's just much more resource heavy while our browsers only got smarter over the last 10 years. Um, browsers are fantastic. They can do all these things that we're now doing with those PWA solutions are powered by the browser, not necessarily by JavaScript. Um, and we can build a great user experience using those browser capabilities. And that means Huva is built in that way that if you disable JavaScript, you still have a fully rendered page. And 80, 90% of the page just shows and, and works. It's just when some interactions uh, uh, playing with swatches or, um, uh, the form key validation security things in the front end are handled by a cookie and you need some JavaScript to handle that. But that's all very lightweight logic. Um, so that's the complete opposite way of approaching how to build a website. And I enjoy, um, um, I feel it's more the, the purest way, the, the purest way of building a website. Um, and it's, it's how I got started. Um, 20 years ago, uh, building a website in raw HTML and CSS, and it evolved from there. And we got to a stage where we started building apps with Flash. Um, I, I bet most of, most of the listeners still remember that if you wanted to play a video in your browser, you needed to install Flash. Otherwise, you wouldn't have videos on the website. Um, that escalated to the point where a whole website would be built with Flash. Yeah, and it was I fantastic. <laughs> I loved that time. I loved building those kind of websites because you could build animations and do all these crazy things. But um, then, then we stopped doing that for a good reason because HTML5 came along and JavaScript got better. And we, we finally got um, really good performance and nice interactions natively in the browser. And somehow now we again got the idea that it should be an app again. Um, and I think the use case for that is just, it doesn't fit for the entire market, not the entire e-commerce market. Yeah, and, and there I, is a fit. I, I wanna key in on that point and going back to your wife and the fact that she wanted this simple store. If, and this is directed to, this is directed to um, uh, Adobe. 
if they want to still retain that middle market and even the smaller merchants, if your solution is here's your back end, now you need to build a front end and attach it somehow. And then by the way, you need all these other peripheral items. You are going, you're like, if when your wife came to you and said, Hey, can you build me the simple store on, on Magento? You'll, you'll, you, you would be like, well, this is going to be really hard or it's going to get a little bit complicated. Let's just do it on this other thing that is everything in one place and we can build it and, and launch it in a day. Even um, worse, I was so fed up with the process of building front ends that I didn't want to spend my free time working on the Magento front end. It was either doing something crazy like this or go for an entire different solution. I didn't want to build a simple shop using Magento. Um, yeah, so I think going, just going back to what kind of keying in what you said about how some sometimes it has to be simple and and actually this solution, the, the solution that you've now provided us doesn't preclude anybody from using PWA. This only enhances it. There has to be an easy entry point for Magento for people to use in a way that you've just described as a use case. And it is, a, it is allowing people to use it uh, quickly and efficiently. And, and I think the biggest thing now is that we're not stuck with something that's super slow and renders in in whatever four or six seconds and is gonna get increasingly poor lighthouse scores. And as we know from Magento is never gonna be supported again and hasn't been supported for the last five years. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're trying to, to, to uh, fill that gap. Um, and um, it's quite a mission um, because we, we want to set certain that future and make sure that in five years, this is still a solution that works. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're building a network of, of agencies and partners that, that can assist us in, um, to, to build this out together and uh, see if we can, we can get an alliance up um, up and running where uh, we make sure that um, we, we keep taking care of Magento as it currently is. Um, when time comes, when Magento sometime in the future says, well, now it's no longer supported. Um, because I won't let my future with Magento be decided by Adobe because it's an open source product and, and uh, we spend more time with that product than Adobe has. Um, so, yeah, that's a good I've, quote. I've feel... spent more time with this product than Adobe spent with this product. I think we've all, well, we've it's all. It's our blood that. and tears. Yes. Um, so um, just looking into the future then, I know that you mentioned in the next five years, tell us about uh, Hufa and the commercial aspects of Hufa. How are you organized and what is your, uh, you have a website which we'll publish on our show notes, but like from a commercial aspect, what are you looking forward to down the line? Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, uh, Hufa is a, is a commercial product, as you said. Uh, it's a one-time fee of a, a thousand euros uh, that, that roughly translates to somewhat in a thousand dollars, I think. Um, and um, with that, you get access to uh, the base product, our library of um, modules that we made compatible with Hufa. So we're working on making a lot of third party modules compatible. Um, so um, that's a shared offer uh, effort. Um, so we, we have an uh, uh, environment where um, people can work on third party compatibility modules and uh, vote on which ones uh, should be supported in the future. And um, uh, the most popular ones we uh, make compatible ourselves. Um, so currently, um, um, the team is currently uh, full-time me and Finai Kop. Um, uh, Finai is spending a lot of time on those third-party uh, third -party compatibility modules. Um, so we're making a lot of uh, progress there. Um, and um, we're, we're expanding the team, so at least um, by the end of the year, I expect that we'll be 
with it currently looks at at least five people. Um, if I, I still need to get, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that, that's work in progress, um, but that's definitely, um, this is not a side project, um, even though this started as, uh, as something I did in my free time and then uh, built out together with Intergenet. Um, this is my full-time occupation um, and um, it, will, it will remain that um, uh, <laughs> for as long as we can keep the show going and i hope that's that's really long um and for the future um so we we want to make sure we, we don't want to do that uh, solely by ourselves but uh, to to see if we um can become shepherds of uh, magento open source um uh, together with partners so i i don't envision that 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 will become huva but we want to maintain the product that we're building us on and and contribute back there and uh, we have talks with with really big agencies that see the same future for their the, uh, for themselves um together with us so that's that's awesome um and then um there's one really big thing that um I personally started building this for. So as soon as this started to take the shape of a product, I knew that in the end, what I wanted to build is a library of components that you can just put into your Magento team and it just works. So we're, we're using Tailwind as a, as a CSS framework for well, everything that you see in the front end, the, the, the design part. Um, and there's a commercial product called Tailwind UI, which, um, is a whole set of um, different layouts for menus and newsletters and page layouts and uh, well everything you can imagine that you would want to have on your website uh, you can copy and paste and it just works and it's responsive and everything and it's super easy to uh, customize that to your own design um, we want to do the similar a similar thing for for huva and then have components that are built to work immediately with Magento, with our front end. So if you have a newsletter sign-up form, you, you browse through a few options and you pick the one that you like and you copy the PHTML file into your, into your team and it just works. Um, so we've, we've laid the groundwork for that. And um, now we're, we're talking with a really good designer that will, will start to, uh, make nice looking uh, uh, page elements, um, a front-end uh, developer uh, that, that um, uh, would potentially build all those components. Um, and um, yeah, that's the future goal. Hopefully in, in, in six to nine months, we have a first beta version of that. Um, and um, there's interest uh, from vendors, third-party modules, um, of um, extension developers, let's put it that way, to uh, create custom teams built on Huva um, and to make their modules compatible uh, or even build modules especially for Huva. So um, I'm hoping we can, we can get a marketplace going there um, where you can get extensions specially made for Huva that look nice and are super performant. So currently we're going for the um, the approach that uh, Luma module can be made compatible for Huva. So we have documentation and guides how to um, um, create a compatibility module or change your original module to also uh, support Huva, um, which usually means if you have a lot of JavaScript, the JavaScript needs to be rewritten. So um, that that's not the hardest thing in the world. It's, it's not really rocket science, but you, well, you need to understand uh, how um, things that used to be done with jQuery are now done with vanilla JavaScript or, or uh, well, without using jQuery. Um, and you get a lot of performance for that in return. And usually if you have, a, sometimes we have a module that's a few hundred lines of JavaScript, and then it turns out that you only need 20 lines to make the same thing work. Um, so that's that's a great exercise. 
Um, so yeah, that's 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 a bit the the, the future plan. Get get a feature complete feature coverage for open source. Uh, there's a handful of features that were still missing there, um, but that went that went really quick considering we we launched uh, last February. Uh, the product is not not even a year old, um, and we have way more features than those PWA solutions currently out there um, because we're re-implementing what was already there with Luma. So we, we can base a lot of these functionalities on logic that's already there in the backend. And we use the layout system and the blocks that already exist. Uh, we clean up everything that we think uh, should be a cleaner or, or neater there. But um, yeah, that's, um, that's, that's how it looks currently. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited, and I've I have spoken to Vinay, and I by the way, Vinay has volunteered uh, the three of us to run the 50k race in Heidenheim, I think, um, this next summer. So um, I'm excited to do that with you as well. Um, the 50k, 50k, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he uh, mountains by his house, so it'll be it'll be. I'll easy. join you for the first five and the last five, maybe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> In between, I'll I'll be uh, I'll be um, at the at the side feeding you bananas and uh, and drinks maybe. <laughs> All right, deal. All right, so we have a few minutes left. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, what what you're interested in 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 sort of reading about books and maybe some podcasts or something like that, and then uh, uh, if you could give us one action item that a that a merchant could do coming out of this, what would what would be the important thing that you could give them uh, as an action item? I think as a merchant, it would be super interesting to see um, <clears throat> a use case that was presented recently on our first meetup, um, where um, uh, Ryan Copeland um, presented um, their first project they did with Huva. And he explains the process of how they um, how they manage that project, um, how they scoped it, how they budgeted uh, budgeted it, um, and um, how they from from beginning to end how that how that project went. Um, I think that that would be a really good primer for um, for merchants to see uh, what. What an agency would look for to to build a UVA team, um, and well, one of the things that that uh, he concluded with was that um, it was the first time since they did Magento two that they ended the project within budget, um, way within the front end uh, estimation they made. Okay, um, so the two takeaways I got from there was that the the project was started and ended within budget and the client was happy. As a happy, the shop is fast, the developers were happy, the project manager wouldn't believe that the work was done because they only spent half of the time that they were supposed to on the front end. Um, and um, the merchant is happy because they got a good product um, for, for, uh, for a good budget. Um, and is that is that recording available on your website? Can like if we can point some people to how to how to view that uh, that presentation? Um, I would suggest linking it in the show notes, um, but okay. it's on our on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you look for um, Huva Meetup, so that's H Y V A and then Meetup. Um, it's the it's the first meetup we had uh, just two three weeks ago. Um, I think, yeah, that's, that's a really interesting, uh, uh, point to get started and start talking with your agency, what they think, if they're interested in, in, uh, exploring Huva, uh, typically, um, what I've heard, um, from, from agencies that work with it is that their developers get productive within the week. Um, so they get familiar with the system and, uh, and, and, uh, don't need uh, long training, a uh, long time to get to get familiar with the system because a lot of things, it feels like an old code, but uh, newly lined. 
Um, so, um, yeah, maybe start there. Okay, great. Yeah, and I'll, I'll link to that. Uh, I'll link directly to that YouTube video. And I'll just point out as two agencies that there is a Slack channel and that if your developer is saying that they can't, they, they don't understand something, they need to ask questions on the Slack channel. I can just say from experience that some of our developers weren't asking questions and I just encourage them to ask questions on the Slack channel and you get answers very quickly. So as yeah, we have the make sure that your developers are asking questions about the theme and how to solve those things as a merchant. Uh, I mean, I think you're right. This is, this is a great solution. And um, uh, the more people on board, the more developers on board, the faster some of these, uh, that some of these innovations and components are going to happen. Um, and then as we move forward, the more fun things we're going to be doing on top of this, uh, on top of this theme. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of innovation built on top of this product. Uh, people starting to build uh, entire page builders on top of Viva and other really exciting things that I, I can't speak about yet, but um, it's, it's, um, it's happening again. Uh, we're, we're, we have excitement that we're, we're, we're doing crazy stuff again. We're inventing things and um, we went through the ceiling and, and, and we can do so many things now. Uh, so that's amazing. We, we really um, threw off the, the shackles. Um, so yeah, uh, you should definitely join. We have over 800 developers on Slack. Uh, and as soon as um, you're, you're a member, a, a, a licensee, then um, you get full access to support. And there's pretty much always someone responding. Um, at least Fina and I are always on top of uh, questions happening on Slack. Um, but we're often too late because uh, uh, other members uh, are eager to help as well and already provide solutions. Um, so then we're late to the party. So that's a, that's a really, really great feeling that, um, yeah, this enthusiasm is there and uh, people are Yeah, there's are so much energy around it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Well, we're, we're actually out of time, um, but uh, if you could, uh, well, first, you know, thank you, but, and I think we should follow up in, in a month or so just with some of the business things that we could help merchants with and why they should be doing this. And I feel like we just need to keep pounding into the ground or pounding into the pavement that, hey, this is what we need. This is where Magento needs to go and get everybody on board. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm a huge, um, huge um, uh, cheerleader for this, for, for your initiative. And I, and I thank you so much for doing that. Um, as we close out, if you wanted to give one shameless plug about anything you'd like, go ahead and, and give it right now. I guess that would be buy my product and become part of the movement. Um, it couldn't get more shameless than that. Um, yeah, it, we're, we're trying to build this for, for the SMB market. Um, we, we want to keep this going. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm super happy with your support and um, giving this the attention and the, and the airtime. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, you're very welcome. Great. Thank you. And uh, Willem, have a, a great evening. And um, I hope that uh, you don't get made to wash the dishes tonight. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Cheers. Bye. Bye. The Talk Commerce podcast is sponsored by Swift Daughter. E-commerce developers solve problems daily. In fact, some of those seem like mountainous hurdles that must be climbed in a matter of hours stress levels can go through the roof. No wonder the plague of burnout affects developers too. Ah, but there's a vaccine for that. Investing time in your career will take you farther than you ever imagined. Meet Swift Otter. Swift Otter exists to help you become the e-commerce hero that is indispensable and irreplaceable at your company. We do this through Magento Certification Study Materials and Joseph Maxwell's most recent book, the Art of E-Commerce Debugging. Go to swiftotter.com to learn more about how you can 
quickly climb the ranks in your quest to be a better developer. While you're there, use the coupon code TALKCOMMERCE for 15% off any digital goods at swiftdaughter.com. This episode has been sponsored by the partner of choice for technology, infrastructure, and enterprise-level digital solutions, an AWS Select Consulting Partner, EWA Corporation, forward together. Thank you again for listening. My name is Brent Peterson, and it has been my pleasure to be your host today. Please rate and subscribe to Talk Commerce. New shows out every week.